face it, I'm running for Congress. Our voters are at the helm in 2020 because our education has failed us. Our infrastructure has failed us. If you're driving force, we can fix that, especially in our health care, because your vote actually matters and you have the choice in 2020. I'm Mia Mason and I approve this message. military father who sent a son to Iraq and spent his career fighting for our troops and their families. Joe Biden knows what makes our country the most powerful and influential in the world. The service member deployed thousands of miles from home. The general making life and death decisions to keep us safe. The wounded veteran and the family helping them recover. American leadership isn't just about an example of our power, but the power of our example. We need a commander in chief who understands that responsibility and the sacred obligation we have to keep our troops safe when we send them into battle and take care of them when they get home. So as long as they're fighting, he is too. Good evening, Marylanders. Thank you for joining us at our Democratic National Gala for us candidates that are fighting in rural red districts across our nation. We are here joined with Joe Biden tonight because we want to make sure that we share his message and also hear from our other candidates that are running on ballots today. So with that, let's take it away with our first candidate. I'm Congressman David Trown from Maryland's 6th District. Last month, we lost a true American hero and legend, Congressman John Lewis. I was lucky enough to visit Selma with him two times, where I heard in his own words on the Edmund Pettus Bridge how he was beaten to an inch of his life, all because he was standing up for the ideals of true equality in America. Everyone was looking for the right way to honor John Lewis. In the House, we passed the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. I saw him last as he lied in state in the Capitol Rotunda. But the way that everyone can truly honor John Lewis, as President Obama said so perfectly in his eulogy, is to get out and vote. That is what John Lewis gave his life for. That is what makes our country a democracy. But it's only a democracy if everyone gets out and votes. That means requesting your absentee ballot now so you can vote by mail. That means casting your vote for who you believe can best run this country. And I think we can all agree on who that is. Joe Biden is a good man who will listen to the experts and lead us to a future that is inclusive and better for all Americans. Thank you for having me here today, and let's get out and vote in November. In a crisis, you're tested. As a nation, we've been tested before, and he has too. During the worst financial collapse in a generation, with our economy on the brink, Joe Biden led the Recovery Act that saved millions of jobs and restored the middle class. During the deadliest Ebola outbreak in history, he helped lead the response that beat back an epidemic and kept Americans safe. Now, we're being tested again, and Joe Biden knows the answer is not ignoring the crisis, bailing out big corporations, and dividing a nation in pain. It's working together to protect the workers who keep us strong, rebuild the middle class, pay people what they deserve, and give every American the path to a good paying job, a quality education, and affordable health care. That's Joe Biden, tested and ready on day one. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Well, thank you, David Trump and Joe Biden for sharing that message. We are glad to hear about what's going on in our communities and, of course, the history and the legacy that we have to go through. 
Overall, all of us have been tested in this troubling time, especially during this pandemic. And of course, it's affecting everybody in our cities. So to take it away from here, it's no other than Johnny O in Baltimore. Hey, Mia. Hey, No Den Left Behind. This is Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski, and I know something or two about running in a tight race. After a long and exhausting primary, I found myself up by nine votes at the end of the campaign cycle. People told me I couldn't win. People told me to throw in the towel. But we pushed through, and we proved all of the pundits wrong. And we know that you can do the same, Mia. Keep pushing. Keep fighting. We need you now more than ever, particularly in this moment in COVID, where you have an opponent who comes out to Towson and protests against our restrictions on large crowd gatherings. And that'd be scary enough if this were a used car salesman, but we're talking about a medical doctor in Andy Harris who should know better. But still, despite knowing the science and the data, comes out and risks the lives of his constituents and all Marylanders by pushing for false narratives about the seriousness of the threat that we face. So thank you for taking on the challenge of challenging Representative Harris, and we hope that we have you representing us after a hard fought victory in November. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for taking on this fight. I'm thinking of all of you today. I know the rise in case numbers is causing fear and apprehension. People are frightened, and they're especially worried about their parents, their grandparents, and loved ones who are most at risk. You know, this virus is tough, but we can stop the spread, and it's up to all of us to do it. We have to step up and do both the simple things and the hard things to keep our families and our neighbors safe. Wear a mask, wash your hands, stay home if you can, and socially distance when you go out. I want every single American to know if you're sick, if you're struggling, if you're worried about how you're going to get through the day, I will not abandon you. We're all in this together. We'll fight this together. And together, we'll emerge from this stronger than we were before we began. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Well, of course, we know how tough elections are. No matter if it's nine votes or if it's, you know, just a couple of thousand. I expect when I'm running up against Representative Harris, it's going to be a super tough race for us. And I mean, we might just win by a couple hundred votes, but it's about making sure that we get out that vote. And nobody else is going to do better than us when we take on Representative Harris. So here's a video by The Andy Harris. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Andy Harris. Yes, that's right. My name's Andy Harris. But wait, you don't look like the Andy Harris we know. Yes, that's probably true. I mean, different Andy Harris. The Andy Harris. A comedian, voiceover, artiste. I'm hoping that maybe one day I am the most notable Andy Harris. We'll see if that happens. I urge you to vote. Maybe you can help make that happen for me. But don't take it from me. Take it from one of my many famous friends. All right, all right, all right. I got here to remind you that this November you got one voice. That voice is going to come out of your mouth, go up into space, into the cosmos, and then come back down into your ear holes, and then go around in your brain, and then come out of your mouth again into the ballot box, and that's where your voice is going to be heard. You're going to vote this November? Be like, cool if you did. All right, all right, all right. Just keep living. Hello, it's Dr. Fauci, and there are two things that you can do that'll save your life. First thing is you can wear a mask. Second thing you can do is vote. And if you don't get out there and vote, I'm going to be very angry. Get out there, wear a mask, also vote. Otherwise, we're going to have big problems. Hey, Sam Elliott here, and I got one thing to say to y'all. I swear on my barley mustache, if you don't do everything you can to get the vote out, we're gonna have a problem. Y'all don't want no beef with me. Believe that. Yes, good.
This is a bit of Palpatine. And I urge you all to vote. Oh, yes. Do it. Do it now. And our journey to power will be complete. Oh, I'm afraid the polling places will be quite operational when the voters arrive. Good. Good. So from me, the Andy Harris, the real Andy Harris, and from my famous friends that you just heard from, welcome and thank you for all that you do. And uh, let's make this happen. All right? The Andy Harris, the real one. I'm thinking of all of you today. I know the rise in case numbers is causing fear and apprehension. People are frightened. And they're especially worried about their parents, their grandparents, and loved ones who are most at risk. You know, this virus is tough, but we can stop the spread, but it's up to all of us to do it. We have to step up and do both the simple things and the hard things to keep our families and our neighbors safe. Wear a mask, wash your hands, stay home if you can, and socially distance when you go out. I want every single American to know, if you're sick, if you're struggling, if you're worried about how you're going to get through the day, I will not abandon you. We're all in this together. We'll fight this together. And together, we'll emerge from this stronger than we were before we began. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Well, as Joe said, we need to make sure that we invest and build in our communities to create those green energy jobs because also our healthcare workers are there working in those environments and we have to make sure that you, our citizens, have a proper health care plan and we envision that as Medicare for all. And of course, for our employers and our small businesses out there that are hurt by this current pandemic, we understand what you're going through and now we must be able to build a stronger America and that's why we need people like Representative Jamie Raskin to oversight what is going on in our economy and of course take care of all the judicial matters that happen in Washington, D.C. Hi, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin from Maryland's 8th District uh, calling in to wish Mia Mason well. Mia is going to be our next Congresswoman from Maryland's 1st District bringing enlightened, effective, and passionate leadership to the people of the first district. And she's done such a sensational job serving our country um, in the armed forces, in the National Guard. Um, and it's thrilling that she's decided to make the plunge into politics in the year when we need her most. You know how we go out and we say, every four years, this is the most important election of our lifetime. Well, forget all of that. This is the most important election of our lifetime, bar none, and we need Mia Mason in Congress. We need total victory from Joe Biden all the way down uh, through Congress, the state legislature, the state, uh, the county councils, the school boards, everything. Um, we need to clean the house because Donald Trump said he was going to come in and drain the swamp. He moved into the swamp. He built a hotel on it, and he started running out rooms to corrupt foreign dictators and kings and princes and governments. And it's time for us to take our government back and put government on the side of the people again. So Mia, uh, we are with you. And remember to tell everybody out there that um, to teach their kids that everything that you need to know about voting is everything that you need to know about driving. If you want to go forward, you put it in D. If you want to go backwards, you put it in R and the special foreign policy 2020 advanced seminar is simple which is you can vote d for democracy or you can vote r for russia and putin's puppet in the white house donald trump so let's stick with democracy let's stick with the democrats and let's make democracy strong again thank you mia mason for uh, what you're doing i uh, give them hell out on the road and i look forward to serving with you in congress next year
Take a look at America today. Over 150,000 Americans are dead from COVID-19. We have a health crisis worsened by Trump's failure to act. An economic crisis deepened by Trump's failure to get the virus under control. A racial justice crisis fanned by Trump's words of hate. A climate crisis exacerbated by Trump's denial of science. And America needs a plan to solve all of them. Over the last century, America has defined itself by rising to meet existential challenges. This great nation will endure as it has endured. This country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested. America is a place where all things are possible. In order to meet the challenges of today, we can't just build back the way things were before. We have to build back better. We'll make the biggest investment in manufacturing and innovation since World War II, bringing back critical supply chains and ensuring the future is made in America by American workers. Today, federal investment in research and development is an all-time low. That's why I'm proposing historic research and development investment to sharpen America's competitive edge in new industries. Experts say that this $300 billion investment could help create 3 million good-paying jobs in communities all across America. There's no more consequential challenge we have to meet in the next decade than the onrushing climate crisis. We'll meet this challenge by creating millions of jobs in a clean energy economy. Jobs that will ensure American automobile industry leads the world in manufacturing electric vehicles. With 500,000 charging stations all across the country, we'll ensure that America has the cleanest, safest, and fastest rail system in the world. We're going to make investments so by the end of my first term, we are going to be on an irreversible course to achieve net zero emissions, economy-wide no later than 2050. In order to build back better, we have to prioritize our caregiving workforce and free up hardworking Americans. My plan will put 3 million Americans to work. We'll work with states to offer every three and four year old child in America access to free, high quality preschool. Right now, low and middle income families spend as much as 35% of their income on childcare. We'll make it so they won't ever have to spend more than 7% of their income. And we'll give more older Americans and people with disabilities the choice to get care in their home or in the community-based setting, starting with the 800,000 individuals currently on a waiting list to be able to do just that. In order to build back better, we have to ensure that all Americans have opportunities to generate wealth, especially communities of color that have been historically left out of the benefits of an economic recovery. That's why I'm going to take on our successful Obama-Biden Small Business Fund and scale it up to 20 times the size so the black and brown small business owners have access to $150 billion in venture capital and low interest finance. Times are tough now in America, but we've been here before. We can do this. We can build back better. And I'm looking forward to getting started as soon as we can. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you, Representative Raskin. I am completely blown away. Thank you for that amazing endorsement. It is something that not many people are able to give us, and I am honored and pleasured to make sure that I give the same passion that you do when coming to D.C. And of course, like Joe Biden said, we have to make sure that we continue to build our America and make it made in America as it was. So with this, we are going to be closing up. And I wanted to remind everybody where I got my passion from, why I am running for office. And it started when this president started hurting all of us. And the take it away, it was me at the Women's March in 2018. First, he came after our immigrants. He came after our national origin. He came after our color. 
He came after our LGBT community, and then he came after me. And that, that's where the mistake happened. Don't ask, don't tell ended without including transgender soldiers. Yep, the Obama administration failed transgender soldiers. It didn't include me until later on. That's when I decided that I needed to come home to Virginia. But I couldn't come home. There was no equality at home. I came home to Maryland and DC where there was equality. That wasn't true either. I got kicked out. I had to fight. I got on NBC News, fought against that administration, got back in, and then it was like deja vu, July 26th, first thing in the morning. Donald J. Trump said, we're doing you a great favor. We're kicking you out. We deserve to serve. The men and women deserve diversity in this armed forces. Scranton is a long way from Wall Street. You won't find skyscrapers or big city bankers. Just hard-working people that make this country work. That's where Joe Biden's story starts. In working-class neighborhoods where you could make a good living and pass on a better life to your kids. That's why Joe Biden went into public service to begin with. To make a difference for working families. Donald Trump, he ran for president for himself and for his friends on Wall Street. For Donald Trump, it's about those at the top. For Joe Biden, it's about the backbone of this nation, working families. This crisis has revealed that we must do more for workers and small businesses, not the wealthy. And Joe Biden is the one to do it, to build back better. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. So there you have it. Now you know why I'm running for office and why we have the moral courage and what we call in the military the backbone. And this has been your national democratic gala so that you can make sure that you get out the vote. You come and join us at the convention. We want you to be there with us and to be a voter. So we also want you to be able to vote by mail, and it's going to be super easy. I want you to be able to grab your phone with your driver's license and text VBM to 77788 so that you can get your ballot and vote by mail. And with that, have a great night. 1973. Año cuando Joe Biden se compromete a luchar por todos por igual en el Congreso de los Estados Unidos. Como senador, venció a la NRA en dos ocasiones y en el 94 encabezó la Ley de Violencia contra las Mujeres. Por eso fue reelegido en seis ocasiones. Fueron ocho los años trabajando codo a codo con el presidente Obama para reducir de 13 a 5.9% el desempleo en la comunidad latina e invertir 750 millones para evitar que nuestras familias centroamericanas arriesguen su vida a lo largo de más de 3.470 kilómetros. Si al 45 le importa tres pepinos si un niño comparte el techo con su madre, nos toca elegir un 46, que viene dando más del 100 desde 1973. La opción es solo una. Joe Biden. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. I'm Mia Misu. I'm running for Congress. Our voters are at the helm in 2020 because our education has failed us. Our infrastructure has failed us. If you're driving force, we can fix that, especially 
and our health care. Because your vote actually matters and you have the choice in 2020. I'm Mia Mason and I approve this message.